Just a quick disclaimer. This video contains lots of spoilers about a movie that came out 25 years ago, sometimes my own opinions and stuff that could be upsetting for some. Proceed with all this in mind. Gataka is set in the not too distant future as the beginning very kindly tells us. In this world people happen two ways, IVF, in vitro fertilization and the old fashioned way. Conceiving through IVF is the norm, where genetic engineering gives a specimen a chance of being as likely to succeed in life as possible, while the old-fashioned way produces godchildren, or uteros, or faith births, who basically roll a couple million dice to get a genetic assembly this society approves of. Most times, they don't. Our protagonist, Vincent Freeman, is a faith birth. Right after he's born, he's given an estimate of his life expectancy. 30.2 years. Which means he's a degenerate. This movie uses so many made up terms, God. His parents being responsible people, when deciding on a brother for him, they consult a geneticist, go through IVF, and choose a perfectly healthy designer baby for themselves with hazel eyes, dark hair, and uh, fair skin. Also removing all of the genetic imperfections so he'll never have to face any kind of discrimination in his life. Growing up, after getting tired of the cards he was dealt, Vincent decides to find someone who'd be willing to give him his genes and identity in order to pursue his dream of going to space. He finds Eugene, or Jean Jerome Morrow, a recently crippled perfect specimen. Gene is willing to provide biological material and his name for Vincent in order for him to become a borrowed ladder at Gattaca, the space agency in this setting. Using Gene's genes, ugh, he's able to secure a job and start working towards achieving his dream. He uses his blood to get in a facility, his urine for drug tests, I'm pretty sure this machine is a printer, his skin cells and his hair, in case someone decided to randomly check if he's who he says he is. He rises through the ranks, gets tangled up in a murder case, finds love, meets his estranged brother who was the detective working on the murder he did not commit, ooh, plot twist, and then goes to space. The end. I know, this was a very crude summary and I left out lots of things. I'd say Gattaca is an okay film, especially for the late 90s where its premise echoed lots of anxieties people had about the future. It definitely has its problems though, from lazy world building to some characters being incredibly one-dimensional, but that can be written off as the movie mainly being a love story and not a social commentary. What I'm going to focus on in this video is the basic setting of the movie, the outline of the world itself, which is why I left out many plot points from the summary. So, to be able to do that, first we'll have to talk about a bunch of things. This is going to be alright, so please bear with me. The society in Gattaca is a eugenicist society, but not in the classic term. What IVF in vitro fertilization in this world mainly represents is the designer baby aspect, a term that concerns many people even today. Genetic data is the gold standard in deciding who's worthy of having a good life and who isn't. It is also the basis of discrimination that is, according to the movie, is not anymore based on ethnicity, religion, etc. There are some parallels to our society, but it leaves out so many things that it can hardly be called a potential future. Lots of words. Let's unpack the thing I just said. Starting strong, aren't we? As I said, Gattaca is a eugenicist society, so first we'll have to discuss what the term eugenics means. Eugenics is historically a wildly immoral and erroneous theory that gained popularity in the 19th century. The term itself was coined by Francis Garton and later became a basis for lots of horrible shit that happened throughout history. It calls for perfecting the gene pool of the overall human population by barring those deemed unfit to reproduce from having children. 
As you can see, this in itself can be used as a reasoning for some truly heinous acts, which is just what happened. We know of cases where forced sterilization, segregation and even euthanasia were used in the name of ensuring the health and productivity of the next generation. I am not going to name the obvious because... reasons. But an actual example is in the United States, where between 1907 and 1963, over 64,000 individuals were forcibly sterilized. The great majority were women of color, and in many cases, criminals were forced to undergo the procedure due to a belief that their bad behavior was heritable. Even today, there are reports on forced sterilization cases of detained immigrants in the US. I could say something pretty horrid about this, so in order to lighten the mood a bit, I'm just going to write it. Good. Now everyone's happy. What I just described as eugenics is the original concept and what you will hear most times. What we have to keep in mind is the fact that this is not about individual choice whether they grant it or not. You can be part of a eugenicist society even if there is theoretically a choice where it is heavily incentivized to have babies as healthy as possible. Is it a real choice where the birth of such a child would result in poverty, debt and endless hardships to parents when having a healthy child does not carry these same risks? Vincent's parents are faced with exactly this. Their kid won't get health insurance, good schools won't accept him and he's not particularly set to have a bright future. On the other hand, his brother, Anton, the engineered kid, does. He has a relatively easy life, which also makes his parents' lives easier. It's a choice, but not a balanced one. Okay, but if eugenics does not necessarily mean taking people's right to choose away, then where is the line? In an essay called Can Eugenics Be Defended, bioethicist Veit, Anomaly, Singer and others argued that eugenics is not merely a morally wrong or right term. Slavery, for instance, is morally wrong. There is no morally good slavery in any case, and fun fact, eugenics was partly used to justify slavery in the United States. However, eugenics is such a broad term that, according to them, it includes all the horrible acts committed in the past in its name and also any practice that favors healthier offspring, including IVF, where often the most viable embryo is implanted and sometimes when both parents carry a certain disease gene, it is possible to test which embryo is healthy and which one isn't. They argue that if you're not against all of this, genetic testing, IVF, telling mothers to refrain from eating foods containing mercury, such as certain fish, then you can't say you're fully against eugenics because in the end it all means you agree that the next generation should be as healthy as possible. I'm bringing this all up because I would like to add nuance to the conversation about eugenics. What I do not agree with from this essay is that, in my opinion, eugenics is not about reproductive control but about establishing an underclass using bad science, which in no way can be defended. Reproductive control is the second step. Once you establish an underclass, clearly, you wouldn't want them to outnumber the upper class, would you? Due to the dark past, some even think we shouldn't use eugenics when we describe all of the above. IVF, genetic testing, etc. They argue that we should opt for the term genetic enhancement instead, because that does not carry the baggage with it. And I agree, when there is no incentive to create superhumans. Anyway, whatever we decide to call it, we can be sure of one thing. We need to draw a line on what we do and don't allow. And oh boy, is it an issue to draw it. In the movie, the only way to get a child that is guaranteed to have a successful life is to have a designer baby. They don't use the term, but instead many made-up things. And as far as I can tell, they use a collection of both 
selecting and altering genetic traits to achieve the desired one. This line, which separates what is acceptable and what isn't, is non-existent. It either became this way or it has always been like this. In our society, however, we have some lines. Some of them are a bit blurrier than others, but they seem to be there. Let's talk about what designer babies are and how similar it is to Gettica's premise. In 1989, the first ever instance of pre-implantation genetic diagnosis was made. In this case, the parents were known carriers, the embryos were screened for serious genetic diseases and the healthy ones were chosen and implanted. Interestingly, they reported that this method is also good for the determination of the chromosomal sex, so parents, in theory, would be able to choose. In 1994, the Council of Ethical and Judicial Affairs released a statement in support of screening for serious health-threatening genetic disorders in embryos, but also stating that choosing based on characteristics such as sex, eye color, height, etc. was not ethical. Well, as this is only a statement, in 1996 the first baby girl was born who was very much intended to be a girl. She was chosen based on the embryo's chromosomes because her parents wanted a girl after having two boys. According to Wikipedia, a designer baby is a baby whose genetic makeup has been selected or altered. Many sources claim Adam Nash, born in 2000, was the first ever designer baby. He was specifically chosen for his genes so that his umbilical cord cells could be harvested and used to treat his sibling with a very serious genetic blood disorder called Fanconi anemia. There is a name for these children, severe siblings, and since the procedure itself is at this point is deemed ethical, it doesn't hurt the child, only the stem cells from their umbilical cord are harvested. There are many ethical debates that surround it nonetheless. Like, even if it won't hurt them physically, living with the knowledge that you only exist because your sibling needed your cells could be a basis for some trauma later in life. As would the knowledge that you've been engineered to fit your parents' wishes. Today, if one or both parents carry a genetic disorder, it is possible to choose a healthy embryo that will not develop the disease. Genetic counselling for at-risk groups is almost standard at this point. Choosing for looks, however, is still considered unethical, but there are places where it is legal and, as follows, there are clinics that offer this kind of service. Very few, though. Altering genetic traits is a different story. You might have heard of the case when a Chinese scientist edited the genes of two embryos to make them resistant to HIV. It caused a huge scandal, the guy was fired and later sentenced to three years in prison. It was highly unethical and, frankly, unnecessary of him to do all this for many different reasons. This is a topic we'll have to go into some other time, but for now we'll have to move on. Another issue here I'd like to highlight is a pretty hard one. When we are talking about disease or disorder, exactly what counts as one? Does having six fingers, all kinds of dwarfism, autism, ADHD, some even believe that LGBTQ people are ill and they are getting more influential in some places. At what point is it fixing a problem and not just refusing to make the world more accommodating for disabled people or those who are just different? Obviously, as I mentioned, there is no line in Gataka. Whether you're born perfect and later become disabled as Jean does or you're just born as a God child, the path from having a set of traits considered as valid and anything different as invalid is a pretty straightforward one to having people who fit one and only one box only. Somewhat similar to what we are facing, but the movie doesn't elaborate on it as much as I'd like it to. Anyway, in Gataka, as they put it, No longer determined by social status or the color of your skin. Welcome to Gattaca, gentlemen. No, we now have discrimination down to a science. But... Your uh, hiring practices. Yeah, this movie doesn't have a lot of diversity. 
We know parts of it are by design, like the exclusion of the disabled, but they elaborate so little that we don't know anything about the underlying structure. And let's be honest, it's probably mostly just a byproduct of this movie having been made in the 90s. This brings us to the specific kind of discrimination the writers envisioned. Genoism is the name of discrimination in this society. It's not legal, apparently, but companies want hire people who they think have greater risks of not being able to do their jobs properly, but will hire some token faith birds, like Irene, to cover their asses. It is closely linked to rights to privacy and such, because these things would only be possible if genetic data wasn't considered private information. The discrimination part, I'm confident, is based on reality. Stuff like this happens all the time, not with genetic data necessarily, but with uh, ethnicity, sexual orientation, etc. There is always at least one lawsuit going on because of these practices. I'll link a website down where you can read about many of them. This part is purely speculation, but if IVF and genetic counselling do cost money in this society, then... Although they do say it's not based on social status, so I would assume they don't. It's easy to see how this would further perpetuate the problem of a glass ceiling. People not born into wealth, not having the same chances and opportunities. This idea would lead to an extreme case of class differences. The more interesting part is the idea of using genetic data as public information and as something to discriminate based on. For that to happen, genetic data has to be something everyone can easily access, just like your name and sometimes your date of birth, depending on what you'll put on the internet voluntarily or involuntarily. Therefore, genetic data is fully public information in Gattaca. Irene is able to get a strand of hair from, she thinks, Vincent and brings it to a place where they give her the entire DNA sequence. At Gattaca, the workers frequently undergo routine drug tests where they again and again check if they are who they say they are using very sophisticated printers. When a director is murdered, they collect Vincent's eyelash, his real one, and he becomes a suspect. I'm sure you've come across these genealogy websites such as Ancestry and Jadmatch at some point. On these websites, you can upload your genetic profile and you can search for distant or not so distant relatives all over the database. People share their genetic info with these sites voluntarily and the sites can use them in ways that are included in the user agreement like catching your third cousin who did a crime by getting to them through your genes on Jadmatch. Just as the Golden State Killer, who was found using a distant relative's data and later charged with 26 counts of murder and kidnapping. In a New York Times article, however, they mentioned that the police have no limit to which cases they are allowed to use genealogy data in. Initially, JADMATCH only allowed investigators to use their database to solve murder and rape cases, but later they expanded this list. And remember, even if one decides that their DNA could be used other ways, that DNA is not just theirs. They are exposing their relatives as well. But an even more concerning use is when the genetic data they use in the first place is not even the suspect's. In the US, ever since the 70s, it is standard to take blood samples for screening newborns. This DNA is used to check for genetic disorders and has been successfully reducing child mortality in the last 50 years. However, a currently ongoing lawsuit in New Jersey shows that police use this DNA bank for criminal investigations as well. Not the same thing as the latter, where people upload their own data and allow the company to collaborate with law enforcement, but instead take a non-consenting third party, a newborn, and use their data to find someone else. I'd just like to add something here. So this was a sexual assault case and I'm very happy they called this guy, however, they apparently had enough basis for a warrant to get the baby's DNA and they actively saw that instead of going for the father 
and now that child is part of the police database without ever doing anything except being born as someone's child. Oh, and another thing. In the US, health insurance companies are prohibited from using genetic data when making insurance decisions, but not life insurance companies. Some places, they can legally ask for your data and not insure you if they choose based on what they see. So the part is kinda realistic with the huge database where they can easily find everyone using their DNA. Having a strong eugenicist society such as the one in Gattaca, morally problematic things are not only part of it, but are the basis of the entire system. In some ways I can see how some would say that this is the future we are heading towards, but the movie takes such great leaps in order to achieve the outcome they want that it becomes quite unbelievable at some point. Yes, there is discrimination based on your genes similar to the movie, but not nearly to that extent. There are people who believe certain people shouldn't breed and that pregnant people should lose their individual rights in order to protect the fetus. Society isn't doing the most it could to accommodate people who are different, but instead tries to find ways to exclude them. Genetic enhancement is not science fiction anymore, but a common practice to screen embryos of at-risk people. And yes, that costs money in most places. The movie was also kind of hard to analyze like this because so many things I thought would make an interesting aspect are just not talked about like at all. For example, pharmaceutical companies are known for their greed. They create treatments and cures for rare life-threatening diseases and charge fortunes for them. Just think about it. What would be more profitable than making a valid from an invalid? And a kind of society that bases everything around genetic data, since genes are only able to tell us susceptibility to some things and not predict them. The line discrimination is now a science from the movie is therefore wrong, because discriminating based on these would be far from scientific. The issue is an onion. Gattaca only peeled back one or two layers, and I'd be interested in what's under the rest. Whatever it is, it's probably not too pretty. 